Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks first to the organizers for inviting me here. Um, oh, I hope there's no. Is it? Doesn't work. Okay. Um, and uh, maybe I should also uh, uh, also um, voice my impression of uh, guys having gotten the big grant. Foundation, um, congratulations. Hope you'll all profit from it. We are ready. Are you coming over? Okay. So um, today I'll uh, um, talk about multi-phase three surfaces. Um, this is a, a mirror symmetry, and uh, you will see. How this kicked off as a big collaboration that I joined rather late, um, and the names of all people will come up in the talk. It's, uh, and the collaborators here is uh, Sean Keel, Paul Hacking, uh, Mark Rose, of course, and um, I'm part of it all in the same order. Okay, so um, for the younger people in the audience, maybe I assume everybody knows what a K3 service is. Um, but maybe you don't all know about modelized theory and so on, so I'll spend two slides on that. Uh, K3, so the complex, compact, complex surface is not necessarily algebraic form one complex family of dimension 20. Uh, the H2 um, has a famous form, it's uh, two copies of the E8 lattice and three copies of the hyperbolic lattice um, of total rank 2 times 8 plus 3 times 2 equals 22. And um, then you have the Hodge decomposition, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, dimensions 1, 21. H2, 0 is spanned by the holomorphic Bowen form. And then there's this famous Borelli theorem that tells you that this line spanned by the holomorphic Bowen form essentially tells you what the K3 surface is. And that brings you to the period domain. You look at the potential classes of this uh, holomorphic Bowen form. So these are classes, or the line, Lattice line of the complex version of L tilde. Uh, the section one with itself zero, with the bar is positive. And then the modelized space is, of course, you need some marking. So that means you need to identify this H2 of your K3 with a given lattice, and that brings you divide out the automorphism of the lattice. And that is as a set, uh, set of isomorphism classes of K3 surfaces. But it's, um, and you can view it as something like an analytic OB space or something, but you very quickly notice that it's not a very nice space. It's, for example, on the house door. Um, it has all other <coughs> peculiar, uh, peculiar uh, properties, but it's sometimes useful. Uh, one, one thing that will be important in the talk is that the Picard group, the rank of the Picard group can jump. You know, the Avery group is given here because H1 Zero is zero, it's just H11, the integral class is in H11. And varying alpha, I mean, you just take the first basis of alpha on the alpha bar, or alpha and intersected to the real part of um, uh, well, the integral class in H, H11, or the, the, the first things intersectional alpha tilde, and that can take any rank between zero and 20, and all these cases actually occur. So in particular, there are many uh, where, where the range of cargo is zero, and that means they have uh, come up the algebraic, they have no one. So then there's this complementary theory, uh, or refined theory on uh, algebraic case three surfaces. So here you fix a polarizing line bundle, and then the classical theory is polarization, this line bundle, the class, uh, has square 2 g minus 2, so even. G and R equal 2, so it starts with 2. That's called the degree of the uh, K3 surface. And that agrees with the genus of a hyperplane section. Hyperplane section, but curve. And then for any G larger equal 0, uh, 2, we have this nice modelized stack. It's actually the Lee Mumford stack uh, of genus G polarized K3 surfaces. And the period theory goes very similar, formally very similar. So now the H class is already given, you know what H is, you look at H per in your, in your lattice L tilde, and that gets you, gets you down to this kind of lattice. Eight, the two E8 classes are fixed, uh, now only two hyperbolic 
and then you have this kind of negative uh, addition to the former age together with this uh, hyperbolic length together with the age. The signature here is 219. Uh, and the peer domain looks probably the same as before. No, 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 this is what minus two curves. Sorry? It's more complicated, it's not minus two. You should remove the algorithm. If you insist on smooth case tree, yes. but I don't. I would like to contract it. Uh, I okay, you I'm not talking about the fact that I don't have the I'm just thinking about your <laughs> Okay, you will see. So anyway, so uh, uh, in any case, I'm not talking at this level of detail. Okay, yeah. We have to make many other sense. So, so that's a model space, but now it's a nice actual space given as it's written on the analytic, but it's really a delayed Manfred stack and even has an underlying quasi-projective variety uh, coming from the Bayesian uh, complexification that we will uh, also discuss and will really important. Now, in this case, for general X, of course, it needs to be algebraic, but still uh, it's as minimal as it can get. So the only class that will survive for general deformation will just be this hyperplane class. So the general Picard rank is just uh, Okay, then let's go to these compactifications. We're talking about uh, wanting to compactify modelized space, and it starts with the Bailey Royal compactification. And that's a minimal compactification for any portion of the So it's fine. If you read these slides many times, you can want to present some compactification space. So, Hermitian is that, of course, symmetric uh, domain by an many group. A very small compactification that if exists always can have uh, all kinds of add all kinds of uh, components, but in this case, the Bailey Bovell compactification only adds dimension zero and dimension one components called zero cusps, confusingly, and one cusps. Okay, and well, cusp mainly because it's a very singular point of the monolith space. So the rest is smooth, but here it's it's kind of singular. Um, and even these, uh, the curves are even known. We'll see they have to do with, uh, with modelized spaces of elliptic curves. They are modular curves, They're kind of explicit. Um, so, right, so then they, you will see that this compactification is not very good from a certain point of view. I'll, I'll explain why. Um, and then you look at a bigger compactification. For royal compactifications, where you want to add to turn these into divisors, so that will be some kind of blow up. Of draw, try to draw here something that uh, that you have divisor components mapped to zero cusps and other components mapped to one cusps. And the beautiful thing in the K3 case is that uh, the one and two uh, zero and one cusps are in correspondence with the geometry of the generations. So over the type two cusp, so if you take a one parameter family that runs through a one cusp, uh, you get, sorry, over the one cusp, you will find a degeneration of case trees that are called type two. And over the zero cusp, you will find a degeneration that is called type, uh, type three. And these are the maximal degenerations. Type three is maximal degeneration, type two is not. So it's important for mirror symmetry. So I've tried to draw using type two and type three. Type two breaks, well, first, this is a situation of terminology that people have coined in the context of looking at one parameter degenerations. Okay, so we are talking about theory of, of a threefold. And you want to look at the degeneration um, where the canonical bundle of the total space dimensions is, is, uh, is trivial. And the family theorem of Kulikov has a pink is all as possible. So you start with something, may not be, and then you start modifying the central fiber, and you can achieve this case. Still, the central fiber that you fit in into such a degeneration is highly non unique And one understands exactly how the non uniqueness comes about, I'll talk about this, and we need to use this. So what are these families? So type 2, they have two rational surfaces. I mean, the extreme case, or maybe even the generic case, there's nothing else. So you would just take two rational elliptic surfaces that you blew along an anti-canonical divisor. Okay? And then 
the anti-canonical divisor would be an elliptic curve. And uh, in more general situations, you could have a chain of elliptic ruled surfaces. So it's a P1 bundle of an elliptic curve, a rather simple object. And it is, I told you that in this situation here, these one cusps, yeah? So these type 2 degenerations are always the one cusps, yeah? And the one cusp, something with, with a model I suppose, elliptic curves. So the elliptic curve you get is exactly this one. So that's the only parameter that is available well compared to the patient seats. Right, those don't one dimension, although he has all these rational surfaces which have big dimension moduli, and we, in trying to find um, a good compactification that supports the modular family, you need to make it bigger. So that's uh, that's what I wanted to say here. This is too small to support uh, a universal family. And in the old days, when these K3 surfaces were very popular, and these these uh, people un unraveled all these things based on this cool of and Pinkham theorem and so on, um, Bob Friedman, uh, David Morrison, uh, um, Scatoni, um, many many other people uh, were involved back then. Um, they kind of understood what the filler net one cusp, but the zero cusp uh, they couldn't could never really get their hands on. But um, mirror symmetry will help us to do that. Okay, so the other situation is yeah, these type 3 components, and that's the situation we are more familiar with. Uh, that would degenerate a K3 surface into, into something that looks like a sphere. Yeah, so it's that some, some rational components glued along anti canonical divisors, so that's the total, total anti canonical divisors. Okay, so, and any of these DVs, that's a cycle of P1s, so it's like a degenerate elliptic curve, it must be anti-canonical on the component. What does that see? Uh, uh, it's, oh, normal crossings. So, right, in this, in this thing that, right, I, I should have emphasized here, that in this theorem, you're looking at normal crossings degeneration, so the total space will be smooth. Actually, so it's probably given by x by z equals t at these deepest points. Thank you. Okay, so so far there's no compactification known that actually supports uh, an extended Nazi universal family of this reason, who lives over this FG. And um, David Morrison in 1993, with the infancy of, of mirror symmetry, already suggested in a paper titled, uh, what was it, Compactifications of Modelized Spaces Inspired by Mirror Symmetry. Um, and he suggested, well, maybe not literally, I had a little talk to if, if check exactly the statement, but I think more leads in there. He suggested that looking at the birational geometry of the mirror will tell you, or it may make some suggestions um, on uh, on how to compact it by the toro uh, on how to do the toroidal compactification. Now I'm not seeing a list to mention. This toroidal compactification is not unique. So the Bay Borel there's only one. Toroidal compactification is infinitely many. Um, and what you have to do is you have to uh, to choose an infinite fan at each zero cusp. So maybe if you haven't seen this, it might seem very strange. Um, Maybe it's easiest to understand in the easiest case of Bailey Borel, which is a uh, model space of an elliptic curve. You have the upper half plane, you divide out, and then there's these rational points on the real line. And these are the, the one one correspondent word mapped to the zero casts. And to, to write down a um, toroidal compactification for this case, it would, would have kind of to, to make choose fans that. that uh, that, um, that mimic this kind of situation locally. So that's, so we have to, this fan has to come somewhere. We need a natural choice of fan that tells us that we can actually uh, extend. Can you remind me about the, the K3 surfaces with ADE singularities? So then, uh, if they have ADE singularities? Yeah. Yeah. You're allowing that? Um, well, you, um, there's the question of what kind, I think you can do both. So either you can insist that you want smooth case ready, 
then you will end up with some non-separatedness of your modelized space. Or you allow these, uh, yeah, you have these A1 signals, definitely. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're a finite distance, they're not the boundary. Oh, no, no, no. Very yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yes, yes. It has nothing to do with the boundary. But which one are you talking about? It's irrelevant because I'm talking about the whatever family you choose in the interior will extend. I'm just wondering because when you say universal family, like, if you think of it as an AD portion stack or something. Yeah, I want that's to ignore all this. <laughs> I mean, whatever category you want, you like to work with. Okay? So, Mori theory means taking by rational geometry, okay? So that will take, tell you, look exactly, you take a one permitted generation, you have this threefold, you fill in the central fiber, but it's not unique, you can do by rational transform that change the central fiber, and that's controlled by Mori theory. And the, the, the whole project kicked off with uh, Paul Hacking and John Keel asking or suggesting uh, to use the smoothing out algorithm of myself and, and Mark to extend the family. Okay, so we have some data that looks like okay, you could make that work. And uh, and then uh, I was initially not part of this project, um, working on some other stuff, uh, other aspects of the joint project. And uh, Mark wrote down kind of the engine of the smoothing thing. And all the birational stuff and so on, I do to Paul and Sean, I guess. And there's some minimal contributions from my side when I joined like uh, three years ago to the project is still not finished. So maybe my contribution might uh, end up with one already, up, but at the moment it's on a 10 pages paper. Um, still, uh, some details to be worked out. Okay, so let's talk about the mirror family now. So for K3 services, these mirrors uh, are known for a long time. Actually, Nikula, even before talking about mirrors, and she observed there is something, uh, some duality in K3 services. And then Paul Espinwall and Claire Boisson uh, suggested to use the mirrors, and she and uh, the other kind of wrote it up in all details, and, and uh, is now the reference to look up if you want to know all about these mirror families. So the mirror family of um, of FG, well, first you should, I highlighted, I emphasize that the, um, that the, that the Picard group generically has rank one, okay? So if you think of this as the Kähler model line of the FG side, then you expect that the mirror should have be a one-dimensional family. That's actually the case. It's a one-dimensional family that is also modular, but the modularity now is you take a K3 surface together with a lattice sitting inside your H2. Okay, some lattice that I call M check. Okay, so for any lattice M with certain uh, properties, you get a modelized base of lattice polarized K3 surfaces, and the original case, the usual polarized K3 surface, is the case when M is just spanned by this one vector H, the polarizing vector. Okay, and uh, this M check. So starting from M with this H, that I call this M check, this is a kind of dual lattice, that depends on the choice of a zero cusp. So FG can have several cusps. In many cases there's only one. I gave here a little footnote, whoever wants to know the details. So if 2G minus 2 is square free, there will be only one cusp. Okay? Other than that, there are several cusps, let's ignore it. It's not so important. But what is interesting is uh, this choice of zero cusps. Okay, that will also give you the M check. Has a very nice interpretation in the SYZ picture. Namely, it's uh, it's a choice of some element abstractly in algebra in the perp space of H, and you should think of this as an SYZ Lagrangian fiber. You know, H is a polarizing class. Lagrangian means it pairs zero. Okay, so this is a fiber class, and then you have some other class also in H perp which pairs with F to one and with square zero. That's actually the Lagrangian section of an SYZ fibration. That's the way you should think of it. And then the mirror lattice is just the perp space of H of the rank 2 lattice spent by HF modeling out by F. It has rank 19 signature 118. Okay, the 118 lattice now. Okay, then you have this modelized space. So here a little cartoon on what, what should uh, go on. This is the side we started off with. The base space has dimension 19, yeah, one less than the 
full K3 modelized phase, all rise just cuts down. Um, now the typo here is Y gem. Sorry, we are here. So dimension FG is 19. And the ranks, the generic rank of the PGR group is 1. And then very soon if you exchange these two, we get a one-dimensional family, FM check, depending on this lattice M check. And the generic rank of the PKR group now is 19. Okay, that you think, can think of the M check, which is not quite true, but uh, all it is. Okay, so now comes the, this old review, and now we start with, with actual new content. Um, so whenever you, you start with with your person kulikov pinkham theorem, the kulikov person pinkham theorem, uh, you take a normal crossing its tension y of this mirror family. So the mirror family now, at the moment, only lives over some curve. A curve with some points, these are the zero cusps. No one cusps, yeah? Obviously. Modular space is one dimensional, there will be some zero cusps in the Bailey Borel compact equation. So this is something actually explicit. You know, you can write down this curve a various uh, g. Uh, there's also some kind of model of curve. Nothing dramatic. And then let's say, and then actually there's one one correspondence. That's also a nice feature of this mirror symmetry of K3. Uh, so it's between the zero cast of FG and the zero cast of this uh, lattice polarized K3s. Okay? And um, now let's go to one of these zero casts of the mirror. So this one dimensional thing, and start filling in these various lines. Let's change. Choose one y, okay, and that gives the partial compactification of F G as follows. So first, you start writing down your dual intersection complex of y zero. <coughs> the triangulated, uh, I mean, some normal crossing surface degeneration. That is a triangulated object. So it's one triangle for each triple point. It's one vertex for each irreducible component of the center fiber, and then one edge for each double curve. That gives, and it was known for a long time, back in the 1980s, that this gives a triangulated two square. Now, um, you can also give this an affine structure. You, you, first, you insist that these are unit triangles, I mean, standard triangles with edges like 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And then, um, you have to tell how to continue here in a straight line. And that's kind of bent of the F1 structure of these edges is encoded in the self-intersection number of the, uh, maybe I should, I think there's something missing here. So if you, if you think of your, of your uh, Y0, there may be some components, and here's some double curve, you know? Double curve, D. And it has a self-intersection number here and another self-intersection number here. And, uh, well, the, the two differ by minus two, or they sum to minus two. And uh, that self-intersection number can be used to tell you how to continue here. Okay? So I'm not giving you the formula, but uh, that determines the self-intersection number determines the f structure. So then you have an f structure, uh, except at the vertices. And um, that's how it is. And you, have, you need to have some similarities. And in previous work, if you have seen my work with Mark some years ago, Typically, we put these singularities at the interior of the edges and call this a simple singularity case. Now, the new thing in the work of Marcus, Paul, and Sean is that you have these singularities in less generic situations and allow even several to adjoin to come together in, 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 in one. Okay, so given this, not more space on the slide, let's assume we have these triangles here. Then we do mirror symmetry and think of this not as the dual intersection complex but as the intersection complex. And then each triangle becomes the momentum polytope of P2 polarized with O of 1. Okay? And well, that determines this x0. We just take torically glued together P2s just in stupid fashion, nothing else. Very simple. The point now is that the irreducible components of y0, so what, what we are missing now is we have some vertices, okay? The vertices where the dual intersection comp, for the dual intersection of the y side, so the vertices of our triangulation, they correspond to the irreducible components on the y side. They're the deepest points on the x side, okay? Where, where three P2s come together. 
here. Yeah? So this you should now think is a geometric picture of x0. And then you do Gromov-Witten theory on this y0, on the irreducible components of y0. So here you have a, have a curve. Sorry, here you have this um, log Calabian. That is one log Calabian. And then you essentially <coughs> count curves here uh, that, uh, that, um, that, that, that hit this boundary in some way. Uh, some genus zero curves. And that if you do this properly by kind of inverting the logic in our joint work with Raoul, Pandari Panda, you arrive at some scattering diagram and some wall structure. And you can run our program in much the same way, but just replacing the considered Solomon scattering algorithm at the vertices at these singular points where you don't know what the affine structure is for this ground fitting theory on the mirror side. Okay? And, uh, and that's, that's uh, this work on surfaces, much as in the work on surfaces by Mark Paul and Sean. Okay, so that gives you a smoothing. Okay, some big family. And interesting is, it's not just the one permeable smoothing, but the natural permeable space is the permeable space counting the curves on the, on the y side. This is a NE, that's the curve classes on the y side, the total space of the degeneration on the y side. Okay, so it's a big space, and well, also formally only at the moment. And this thing has rank 19 plus G, so it's a 19 plus G family. 19 plus G dimensional family, that's <coughs> off, okay? We have G dimensions too much. Um, but fortunately, there's also a G dimension of torus acting on the thing, and there's some miraculous process that gives us a distinguished slice that I don't want to comment on. So we can cut down to 19 dimensions. So what, now it gets subtle. Um, so what we have is we have formal families. Let's ignore the difference between 19 and 19 plus G, but at a point, OK? The formal neighborhood of a point. Now, this thing here looks like a toric variety. Not quite, I mean, I'm lying to you a little bit. Let's assume that this NE of Y is actually rational polyhedral. Typically, it is not. Okay? We may have to go to a slightly bigger cone, but let's ignore this. And essentially, it looks like a toric variety, the thing. So there are some toric divisors. And the first thing we have to do is extend our formal family. Well, these torque devices, I should say, these are, will be the torque devices that you have to attach in the toroidal compactification. And um, how am I doing time wise? Oh, oh, oh. um, okay, so. Um, yeah, so these will be the divisors that you attach to your, in your toroidal compactification, okay? So uh, the first task is we want to extend it to a formal neighborhood of this divisor. That essentially amounts to digging into the scattering algorithm, into the wall structures, and make sure everything is finite enough to assure it is actually still convergent here, as a formal, formally, extends formally to, in, in this direction, all the bright in these directions. The second headache is, now we have these various formal things of y, okay, the various y's. And how we glued in y, we have two different gluing in that give us completely different families, okay? It has nothing to do with one another. Different triangulations, <coughs> different whatever. So we have to make sure that if we, if we take different, two different things, then in some way there must be some gluing and some compatibility on the, on the overlap. And that amounts, um, that amounts to understanding exactly what's happening in the birational geometry of the central fiber and how it interacts with the smoothing algorithm. So fortunately, these people back then in the 80s, they classified what's happening in how the non-uniqueness of the, of the birational, I mean, of the filling in of the central fiber. It's always a succession. Um, of the following, uh, following, well, there are three types of things you can do. First, you could do something on the interior of a component, then we don't care. Or a smoothing algorithm doesn't see it. 
And then there are these two other things. The so one is the famous Atiyah flop on the total space of the degeneration, um, where you we take a minus one curve on one component, you contract it as no expense, no singularities occurring on the central fiber, but in the total space, and then you kind of fill it in on the other side to blow up the other side. That's one non uniqueness It's one typical one house of phenomenon at the boundary. Um, in the triangulation, that means, in the dual dissection complex, that means that you take some kind of focus focus singularities, these simple singularities we have this mark before, and move it over to the next vertex. So that's, I try to indicate this in this uh, situation. That's something we know for a long time how to handle the scattering process. It doesn't do much. And the other case is essentially a toric situation. Let's just ignore that these are not toric varieties here, these components. Um, they're just kind of some block color bios, um, and you do this, this toric transformation. Okay? Think of this as being part of the toric divisor and you can do this. And on doing the fan thing, of course, if you've studied any kind of torque geometry, you know the first point fan is a cone over these kind of different triangulations. <coughs> okay, so it is now important that he, that we, to make this all, the whole process work, we need to, um, we need to work with this N E of Y. Okay? And that's one of the things I would like to highlight in this talk here. There's, of course, one nice kind of cone that is the NE of this Y star, the generic fiber. Okay, that's a rank 19 thing. It's a, it's a cone, convex cone, it's a rank 19 uh, or dimension 19 vector space. But that's not good. That doesn't help you to, 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 to write down the toroidal compactification. To get the toroidal compactification, you want to fill in all these different Ys and then very Y. And that gives you different cones um, in the uh, in, in the compact equation. So <clears throat> the non-uniqueness and the control of the central fiber is, is very crucial. So it's not not not. I mean, I always thought this is in one sense it's a it's a nuisance that you always that. Sometimes, if you want to work with these kind of smoothing algorithms, you need to fill in a central fiber. <coughs> but here we see sometimes there's also benefit. And there's some essential feature of mirror symmetry that mirror symmetry is compatible with these kind of structures. So we have on one side, we have these uh, irrational geometry. On the other side, we have the toroidal geometry of some toroidal compactifications and smoothing that patch together in a nice toroidal fashion. The second subject of this. You have a, a, Could you just remind us what any is? Oh, again, the curve classes. Things that, right. So that's, a, that's the thing where the, um, that will be the, the, that will carry the monomials, yeah? So if you do some normal fitting theory on some such a thing, all your, these are the coefficients of your scattering diagrams, of how you glue your various toric pieces, and they, they have, they live naturally over this ring. They have coefficients in any y. The fan lives in the dual side, actually on the Picard, Picard group. Okay. So for for the KT surfaces, when you say mirror symmetry, what version of mirror symmetry specifically are you in mind? Just mirror, so is mirror symmetry or well, I'm what using by the, the I'm using the lattice mirror symmetry that is around for for a long time, and I'm showing you how this fits with the mirror symmetry that I have been developing with Mark. And does it have any? And that's a, that's a, like an S Y Z style mirror symmetry. Does it have any enumerative thing attached to it, or...? Um, in, a, in a way, it's built in, in saying I'm doing normal theory on the center fiber, but it's not this kind of, no, not a priori, okay? It's more this kind of disk thing. You should think of these as disks, kind of general disks. So the second thing that I want to highlight in this talk is, um, and this is a part where I was a little bit involved, uh, which brings in my, my, my work with, uh, with Helga, is that we need to still attach our formal family. So we had, what's the situation, what do we have? I mean, if we believe that actually the Mori fan gives you some kind of fan that you can use in a toroidal compactification, and for each cone that of your fan, you actually have a formal model, okay? And they even patch. So you have some toroidal compactification of your monoid space, 
And in a formal neighborhood of the compactly formed thing, you have a family. And then you have another family that is analytic, or maybe algebraic, on the complement. So you have to patch these two things. And that amounts to really identify all the parameters on both sides of the earth symmetry and make sure they match and they patch together. Um, and that amounts to computing these period intervals. So alpha was a holomorphic n form. And then you want to integrate them over 32 cycles as functions on the base, which locally is given as this thing here, this formal NE1. And there's a result of Noé Bailly coming in handy that tells you that indeed there are some patching, the patching statement, if you have some algebraic family on one side, if you have a formal family, then you can extend the algebraic family if they only agree formally. So there's a notion of a generic formal point, an affine neighborhood, yeah, a spec of some k algebra, let's say, and then you have can complete, and there's something very odd, a little bit, maybe uh, there's a generic formal point, and you compare the two families at this point. And we can do this once we can do period integrals, because these will be even analytic functions, and if they agree, then the assumptions of the theorem of Mori by D works. Moreover, we can do this because these formal points all kind of generic patch together. It's enough to just do this at one point of the boundary. If we know one point of the boundary where this works, then we're fine. The whole family will patch. And this is where we can um, reduce to a situation that I've been studying with Mark, where of these simple singularities. So there's a little bit of a trick that you have to do to make sure you there is such a situation, but let's assume our degree is sufficiently high, then you can imagine you can just put these red dots, these singularities of the F structure on the interior of the edges, you know, in this uh, area, then you can just get enough singularities and actually get, get, get some model with the right number of components uh, that should give you some, some FG family. What is some more? Yes, it should be right. Yeah, they always sound the same. So, right, so what's the strategy? So we first compute we have to identify this H2XZ in terms of Einstein geometry. And then we show that the period integrals are monomial in this, uh, in this thing. Okay. And second, we identify this M check with the Picard group of the generic form. Okay. So <clears throat> recall M check was defined as something having entirely to do with the X side. It was the perp space of the H, essentially. <coughs> and um, that is on the mirror side. So we have we need some canonical identification so to patch this everything, to patch everything up. So let's go to this case with simple similarities. So that's a case Mark and I have been familiar with for many years. And you can arrive at the situation if you assume that your non-toric thing. So what is non-toric? So Y0 has these log Calabiao things. The log Calabiao has some contractions. So there will be many minus one curves or minus two curves and chains of such things going in. And sometimes you can, or sometimes you can blow all these things down to arrive at something toric. Okay, so that's uh, this stuff in, in surface mirror symmetry that Mark was working on with Paul and Sean. And, um, and so let's assume that we have such a, toric, uh, such a contraction, contracting all these things, and leaving you with a central fiber that is only toric irreducible components. Now on the Y side. Now it's very confusing. I got very confused from a long time. So the X side has only P2s on the central fiber. The Y side now usually starts with log calabiaus. Now you contract, and also the Y side has, uh, has uh, toric components. And then you can do a mirror uh, family much as before, and that will cover an open subset of the mirror. So if we can check, can identify our parameters on this mirror family, we're fine. 
So what is this now? So is it here are the 24, uh, Maxime? No. Uh, I said, oh, is it proof first? <laughs> the 24 focus focus singularity is on the address. And then we have a sheaf of integral tangent vectors. They will come up in various formulas. They are always denoted by lambda. And I is the inclusion of the complement of these 24 points. Uh, we always have the same number, the number of vertices, the number of irreducible components of y0 bar or y0 that you get attached to g plus 1. Only depends on the degree. And with the number of triangles, it's also fixed that the t invariant of Friedman Scatoni, t for triple points, the so number of triple points, and they are also fixed there to g minus 2. And then Mark and I proved already in 2007 that we can uh, identify the limiting mixed thought structure in terms of affine geometry. So these two things, this is like H20 and H02, uh, that's rank one, and then we have some interesting piece in the middle, and H1B I lost the lambda star, okay, which has rank 20. Uh, 20. Okay, mm -hmm. and then there's some fundamental, inf uh, so there are two fundamental classes in our program. The one is purely affine, it's called the radiance obstruction, and it measures essentially, uh, you know, you have these focus focus singularities, and they have some invariant direction. So let's try to draw this in the plane, and um, extend these, or go to the universe cover, and extend these lines. If so, all match, all intersect in one point. This manifold is called radian, that means there is a coordinate system where your patches are not affine but linear. Um, there's a cohomological obstruction to it, and that's this, um, that this radiance obstruction lists in H upper 1 B I lower star lambda. So it tells you essentially how you have to translate these invariant directions, how far they are away from the origin, <coughs> if you want. Okay, so that's the radiance obstruction. Um, and that is, has some meaning in terms of the gauss manin connection of the Y side. So it's a dual intersection complex picture. And, um, and we know that CB squared is actually 2G minus 2. You can compute that for a situation like this, it's really the number of the triangles. It's a T invariant. Um, this is very important because I have done something formal and run my smoothing algorithm with Mark. There's no guarantee that I get, end up with the right family. I have to make sure that I'm actually retrieving this mirror family Y. And that is, that is false once I know that it is the right, has the right T invariant. Okay? Because then we are in, in then this is, uh, classify the thing directly. To go on, um, the essential truth is to understand period. <coughs> that is our handle to get, to identify integral cohomology classes. And for example, to compute the Picard group. Okay, the Picard group of the integral class in H11. You can see this um, by this following theorem I proved with Herder last year. Uh, there are a number of details. So the first, the period integrals, so I mean these integral over some two cycles of the holomorphic two form. Um, they can be computed and they are monomial, okay, for any family like beta of two cycles on any on our smoothing, now x, and also applied on the y side now, um, that are associated to what we call tropical one cycles on the complement of these singularities. So delta is a singular because it's these 24 points. Let me, before reading the rest, let me give you some picture of these tropical one cycles. Um, so here's your alpha manifold with the red dot singular points. Um, and then a tropical one cycle is, is just some, some cycle here, uh, this yellow thing, doesn't need to be straight or anything, uh, but it carries um, parallel sections of integral tangent vectors. And there's some balancing, the obvious balancing condition at each vertex where they come together. And now there's something like this, right? Monodromy allows you to actually make, do something like this. You go around a single point, come here, the, the vectors change, and then you can continue with some other way. That's a typical thing that would happen. Um, and for these, I was trying to tell you how we constructed a family of two cycles. So first you should observe these are these kind of 
in an SYZ vibration, there are S1 vibrations <coughs> over a graph. Okay, the graph being this kind of tropical cycle thing. Um, we are on the x, x side uh, for this picture, so in uh, momentum polytrop. Um, so let's say this is part of beta trop. Then over this, there should be a four-dimensional picture. I could only draw something two-dimensional. Um, and that would be, if here's some polyhedral decomposition, that means that, that your, your, your two components come together at a point. So for this x0, you can, it's no problem to write down a two-cycle. It's just a toric thing you want. It's a family of S1 over each momentum polytope, and then you just add, attach these points. Now if you smooth, this thing will blow up into some, something uh, bigger, and it may even wrap around. Um, so the, the, this family of two cycles necessarily is not entirely well defined, it's multi-valued. Uh, it can change by, these, by the vanishing cycles, which are the SYZ Lagrangian fibers. Okay, so that's the picture, and we can compute here the integrals of these things. And yeah, I have to think about this picture as product of S one. Yes. So on this side, there's a cross S one missing. Okay. Um, right. So here we can compute these integrals. Well, first, one can see that these tropical one cycles that are defined here homologically, uh, they actually generate this sheaf homology group. Um, and then we can show that the coordinates kind of you get on the base that are like the x of the period integral. The period integral will have a logarithmic pole, you take the x of it, and they are monomials. And this power of the monomial is given entirely discrete. Okay? So, Here's your tropical cycle, and this thing, this group carries kind of monomial deformation parameters, the things that would end up in something like K and E Y. Yeah? So this is saying that we can compute these things. Uh, and then what is also easy to see is that these two cycles, if you do the usual intersection product, they're compatible with the intersections of tropical cycles, just as you might do the thing. So we have this slide. So then we um, now we have to compute. Um, um, so now we want to try to compute this peak of uh, y gen. Okay. Of course, for abstract reason, we know it should be something like uh, M check, uh, but it's not. We have to. We know we compute and identify it in terms of affine geometry, and we can. So if you look at these cycles, and you know that this two cycle M check, if it is lies in, if it is Poincaré-dual to a one-one class, and that will be the case if the period is goes zero. So there's something you can check entirely in in affine geometry, but Um, sorry, I missed that slide. I see. Right, so essentially I already told you. So we, are, we can do period integrals on both sides now. Both the x side and the y side. I have now these kind of GS like simple singularities. Um, and there's a Legendre duality. The Legendre duality goes, takes from triangulation, takes a dual cell decomposition. The spaces B is the same as the dual thing, but the sheaf of tangent vectors dualizes. Okay, let's see, lambda B check the dual of lambda B. Okay, so and then we, we find out that we have a monomial deformation class, the thing that ended up in the period integral that you have to check here, right? We have a one-dimensional family. So there's some class here that tells you in which direction you deform with the Y. And that is given by this piecewise linear function that lives over our B. And it's a class in H1, many decorations, it's on the dual side with the, the dual tenant vectors, co tenant vectors. So that gives this condition for saying that beta is congruent to a 1 1 class. And hence, it's a perp space 
in H law one of our laws no longer be changed. Okay? Um, so uh, this dot should be here. So the y to the s actually restricts over the pointed uh, curve to the given mirror family. And uh, this extension is a toric degeneration, not a normal crossing degeneration. Okay? So now we have a toric degeneration picture of this. And in this, we have identified the PCAR group of the generic fiber. So abstractly, we know now that. Um, that uh, uh, oh, it's another typo. So essentially, forget about this thing. The pick y gen is essentially just m check, uh, which was defined as h of perp mod f. But we need this canonically, right, to use a more refined factorial classification. So let's go to the mirror side, the x side, um, and we see that we get an embedding of z20. This is h1 v i loss the lambda in h2 of the T fiber mod F, that's a Z21. And again, um, we have a natural class on this side. The radiance obstruction now on this side becomes a polarizing class. Yeah? Um, and um, we can show that for a tropical one cycle, the integral, now this is not the period integral, uh, this is a pairing with the polarization class, it's just the pairing given. Uh, by integrating a co-cycle with a cycle. So this is a theta chop valid at H. And hence, the M check is defined, is identified now with the perk of the radiance obstruction. You know, it's a bit annoying here. We have all these groups, right? So, but we have one group here, on the V-check side, and we have another group here. And now we need to identify everything. And there's still some non-trivial process here because this is still the one on one side the meaning is a deformation class, and then on the other side the meaning is something having to do with homology. And um, so there's some version of Poincare duality um, that Helga spent a lot of time on. <laughs> right? That one was also not so easy. I mean, so anyway, so that's this innocuous looking thing, and of course in dimension two, dimension one is the same as two minus one, so this means h lower one, I lost the lambda is the same as h upper one, I lost the lambda. That's correct irregularity. And then we have a sequence of canonical isomorphisms. So I don't really want to read it maybe. I mean this is the thing this is the thing with the period goals. This Legendre duality that identifies the lambda star on the check side with the lambda on the other side. And then we have this thing, the point gray duality, and then we have the intersection product between the two H1s. Okay? And if you take, trace through this, you get a canonical isomorphism between the left and the right. And then the Legendre duality also, and that's very important, uh, swaps the CB with this first churn class of the PL function on the mirror side. And that makes the whole thing work. And that gives us finally at last this identification. So everything works. We have identified everything by looking, reducing to a GS like situation with simple similarities. The mirror symmetry works beautifully. And we have full control of everything going on and the integral structures, everything. Um, so that's my last slide. I think I had two, two main points that. Uh, this application of mirror symmetry, two things that often are ignored, uh, have become very important. The one is the control of this center fiber and the good control of really of the birational non-uniqueness. It was very important that we could control these birational transforms, how the, these minus one curves moved over and all these things, and how, how it works with mirror symmetry. And to relate this integral affine geometry, it was also important to have an integral affine geometry here, um, work with our direct geometry models with the integral cohomology, the modern drawback reactions, and the period integrals. You know, period integral would, of course, say that our families are canonically parameterized. And this was possible reduction to the simple similarity situation. That was it. Thank you for your attention.
that this family is in them in such a way to get uh, in the living of this in the body? Um, what kind of similarity? Seemingly. Uh, I mean, of course, you can use the theta functions and embed everything, but um, right. So okay, so there is some some point with the theta functions here, of course. Um, there is a fantasy and kind of half proven thing um, that if we do not cut down by g, so we we'll work with the 19 plus g dimensional family, that this is indeed what is called the KSBA stable pair thing. So you would get, on our families, on our degenerations, we have theta functions. And you can just write a sum of the theta functions. That gives you kind of some kind of theta um, a divisor on, on your K3 or degenerate K3, the families of K3s. And we can prove that this is um, this kind of stable pair in, in uh, birational geometry. So um, I guess is that indeed the 19 plus G dimensional family would be a KSBA complexification that we know. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Is this guy the true polar? Yeah, so, um, oh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, it's a bit long-winded story, so I don't really know. There's another approach which uses portraits uh, more performed by I know Laza's stuff. That was ASPA, but there's another thing by which is probably closer, which by Alexiev and Thompson. They looked at the G equals two case, and in this case, they have a different way of arriving at the toroidal contactification. I have a student, Carsten uh, Wiesel, looking into this. So, is that the fact that they use more that I haven't seen. I see. Okay. I see. But they, how do they use it? To, oh, to get, how do they get the family then? Just, just by writing down all the patients? This is a long time ago, I wrote a paper with Borges and Tony. Is there a real construction with NGK surfaces in sub surfaces? Oh, we have looked into this. But I, uh, I would just see when NGK surfaces should, should work very similar. Because like the Picard group is rigid, and then it's, it's, yeah. it's more similar to the Chalagia group. Right. I mean, there's, people are even starting to look into uh, to, um, type of k stuff. So stuff that is like built, built NK3 should also, one might be able to do something. Oh, that's a good, but yeah, so, so what's the special, oh, I haven't thought about this. Um, I had thought about it and then forgot. <laughs> I didn't come to anything, but I'm not sure what this is. It means that um, you have this, the sum of the uh, self intersection of the uh, minus two, it's on both of the minus one, they split the, so they, they show that you can always buy it using these. Uh, oh, I know what it is, sure, yeah, you, you, can, you can make it so that these, these self intersection are always minus two. Um, I don't know. It probably just means that there is some distinguished triangulation, distinguished f structure for any genus. <coughs> don't know what to do with it. I mean, there must be some, might be some combinatorial trick, but there's yeah, such a thing. Also, what you said you have to go to high Oh, well, that cannot be a uh, yeah. Now we we solved that problem. Are you supposed to start a new spread or 15 minutes spread? Uh, okay, so maybe let us start at uh, 3.45. Thank you very much.